At one point in time, the F-22 Raptor became a symbol of the technological power of the United States and the undisputed leader of its generation. However, against the backdrop of rapid technological development and the equally rapid emergence of new threats, even the best devices have felt an urgent need for modernization. Today, we're looking at the upgrades the F-22 has already received and what the U.S. Air Force might integrate into the so-called F-22 Super recently announced by the U.S. President. As the world prepared to turn to the new millennium, the U.S. Air Force entered the final stretch of developing its new fifth-generation stealth air superiority fighter to replace its aging fleet of McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle and General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon. The program was called Advanced Tactical Fighter, ATF, and its main goal was to create a powerful fighter capable of neutralizing any air threats in the event of an invasion of Central Europe by the USSR and Warsaw Pact countries. The concentration on the air component was emphasized, among other things, by the codename of the ATF program, Senior Sky. Northrop Grumman and Lockheed Martin faced off in the finals of the competition for the right to give the U.S. the first fifth-generation aircraft. The former presented a YF-23 demonstrator focusing on the stealth and speed of the aircraft. However, High Command decided not to risk its epaulots and taxpayers' wallets, opting for the less expensive and risky YF-22 from Lockheed. Still, we're firmly convinced that the time of the innovative Northrop YF-23 is still somewhere just around the corner. Before the YF-22 demonstrator was transformed into the production F-22, the Lockheed team had to spend hundreds of hours on modifications. These included reducing the sweep angle of the leading edge of the wing from 48 to 42 degrees, reducing the area of the vertical stabilizers by 20% and moving them to the rear of the body, a 7-inch headlight offset, reshaping the radome to improve radar performance, wingtip trimming for antenna integration, removal of special air brake, move engine air intakes back 14 inches, general improvement of the shape of the fuselage, wings, and tail edges of the stabilizer to improve aerodynamics, airframe strength, and its low observable properties. The result is an aircraft whose form has been proven by nearly 20,000 flight hours in the wind tunnel and ground testing, and whose expected airframe life has reached 8,000 hours after significant strengthening of the YF-22's internal structural design. The Raptor's first flight took place in September 1997 under the control of Chief Test Pilot Alfred Paul Metz, and it was not until seven years later, in December 2005, that it entered service with the U.S. Air Force. The F-22 was the first U.S. Air Force aircraft to combine supersonic crews, super maneuverability, stealth, and sensor fusion into a single weapons platform. This would allow it to survive and carry out missions in the harshest environments where another aircraft would almost certainly be quickly neutralized. With two Pratt & Whitney F-119 turbofan engines with thrust vectoring capability, the Raptor is capable of producing more thrust than its equally legendary ancestor, the F-15 Eagle, at full throttle, even without using its afterburners. The new fighter was so good that three years before it entered service, test pilots flying the F-22 were able to destroy 12 F-15Cs in less than two minutes during a single air-to-air -air exercise. And this despite the fact that the F-15 never lost a single air battle with an enemy aircraft, securing an unrivaled record of 104 victories and zero losses. But even this proud eagle fell before the teeth of the Raptor. The Raptor was designed to be virtually impossible to detect, much less tracked by radar. To achieve this, the airframe's edges were smoothed out, the surfaces were given continuous curvature, and fixed geometry serpentine air intakes and curved blades were installed to obscure the engine fan and turbine surfaces. Additionally, the engineers generously coated the body with radar-absorbing material, left a huge space inside for various weapons, integrated an active cooling system, and helped it mix with the air through vortices, which greatly reduced the infrared radiation emitted by the device, and along with it, the threat from enemy infrared homing surface-to-air and air-to-air -air missiles. And since 2021, chrome-like surface coatings have been spotted on the F-22, which helped make the aircraft even less detectable to adversaries, even given the rapid advances in infrared search and track erst systems over the past decade. Even today, the Raptor, which dates back to the late 1990s, remains the stealthiest fighter with an effective scattering surface more than 15 times smaller than that of the modern F-35 Lightning from the same Lockheed Martin, and 100 times smaller than that of its Chinese supposed competitor, the Chengdu J-20. 
The F-22 featured the most advanced and powerful radar ever installed on a fighter jet at the time, and avionics with data fusion capabilities that gave the pilot a comprehensive view of every single thing going on around him in the battlefield. Information from the radar, communication, navigation, identification, CNI suite, and other sensors is processed by two Hughes Common Integrated Processor, SIP, mission computers, each capable of processing up to 10.5 billion instructions per second. What's even more interesting is that the F-22's ability to operate extremely close to the battlefield has given it threat detection and identification capabilities comparable to those of the Boeing RC-135 Rivet Joint Reconnaissance Aircraft. In other words, during a mission, you can easily turn the Raptor into a mini AWACS, Airborne Warning and Control System, providing allies with operational target designation and coordinating the actions of friendly aircraft. Lockheed Martin, the prime contractor for the F-22, has repeatedly hinted at introducing the TAC Erst-based infrared defensive system, ERDS, into the Raptor fleet. TAC Erst itself was introduced in 2022, and its first integration occurred on the nose sections of F-5 Advanced Tiger Aggressor aircraft owned by private contractor Tactical Air Support, TAC Air. Ironically, the F-22 was originally supposed to have an integrated Erst system, but those plans were scrapped for budgetary reasons very late in development. And in the late 2010s to early 2020s, the Air Force finally returned to the idea of adding Erst capabilities to these fighters. The service's FY 2025 budget request cited aggressive work on an advanced infrared search and track sensor as part of a sensor enhancement effort for aircraft beginning in 2023. In addition to infrared sensors, new low-visibility external fuel tanks were discovered in one of the F-22 photos in the spring of 2024. Aside from using the F-22 to test technologies being developed for the next-generation air dominance program, the most likely reason for the Raptors' wing tanks is to help the U.S. Air Force's fighter fleet adapt to modern geopolitical realities. After all, the vast distances they would need to cover if they were to operate in the Pacific Theater – coupled with the F-22's modest 530-mile combat radius and the enemy's growing air defense capabilities, provide a strong incentive to innovate. New low-visibility fuel tanks could become one of these. Furthermore, like the more visible 600-gallon tanks of the F-22, the fighter will be able to quickly drop them along with the pylon to which they were attached somewhere on the battlefield, restoring its stealth characteristics. An equally important innovation for the Raptor was the receipt of the helmet-mounted display, HMD, Scorpion from Thales. This, by the way, is another feature that was originally planned to be added, but later abandoned. Yes, even after acquiring the AIM-9X missile, which can hit targets well beyond the aircraft's centerline during air-to-air -air combat, F-22 pilots still lack the ability to target it dynamically using the most convenient means available, the HMD. However, the contract for the integration of Scorpion into Raptor was signed in the fall of 2024, and these systems are finally here. The cool thing about the Scorpion is that, like most modern fighter jets in the U.S. fleet, it's modular. That means you don't get a new helmet every time they add new features. You just get them as software, like on your smartphone, tablet, or PC. Among the upgrades for the F-22 particularly interesting are the addition of the latest Beyond Visual Range air-to-air -air missile, BV-RAM, the AIM-260 Joint Advanced Tactical Missile, JATAM, developed in-house by Lockheed Martin, and the ability to operate in tandem with the latest collaborative combat aircraft, CCA drones, which are being developed specifically for the fleet of existing U.S. Air Force and Navy fighters, as well as future NGAT aircraft. Recent statements by U.S. President Donald Trump have reignited public interest in the Raptor, at a meeting with business leaders in Doha, Qatar, he called the F-22 the most beautiful fighter in the world, said that we're going to be doing an F-22 Super, which will be a very modern version of the aircraft. After all, the Raptor has never fought the kind of serious threats it was designed to combat, and its most recent operational history includes the successful destruction of several Chinese spy balloons discovered over U.S. soil in 2023. If the president gives Lockheed Martin the green light to restart F-22 production lines, experts estimate it'll cost more than $60 billion. Therefore, the most likely scenario seems to be upgrading the existing fleet of 187 Raptors to some F-22 Super rather than recreating the production infrastructure, supply chains, and increasing the staff, especially given that no one's discounting the F-35 whose serial production is flourishing.
But what kind of upgrades these F-22 Supers will receive is something we'll have to find out in the next few years. Now it's your turn to tell us what upgrades you'd like to see under the wing or inside the F-22 Raptor. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.